Hi everyone, space has no boundaries. You must admit that there is something incredibly attractive and mysterious in this dark veil surrounding our planet. Space has been fascinating people for hundreds of years, since the very first time we looked up at the stars. But at the same time, it can be frightening. Space is not only beautiful, but also hostile and sometimes even deadly to humans. If you end up outside the ship or station, get lost, lose contact, and then, what exactly will happen to a person lost in space? We'll try to figure this out today. So, three, two, one, start. It is believed that mankind made the first steps towards flying to distant worlds at the end of the 19th century. Back then, scientists figured out that if the aircraft reaches the speed required to overcome gravity and maintains it for a sufficient time, it would be able to go beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Alas, back then, people still did not know how to achieve the required speed, and science was not yet able to create truly powerful engines. Many years and two world wars later, the era of space exploration began. On October 4, 1957, the first artificial Earth satellite Sputnik 1 was launched into orbit. Sputnik 1 was made in the Soviet Union and was a kind of sphere with antennas weighing 83.6 kilos. Today it doesn't seem like much, but in that time, the launch of Sputnik 1 was a real breakthrough. After that, scientists launched various living creatures into orbit, like dogs, monkeys, flies, spiders, or different bugs. On October 12, 1961, mankind had made a huge leap forward in conquering space. Vostok 1 spacecraft was launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome, carrying the world's first astronaut on board, Yuri Gagarin. After making one revolution around the Earth and traveling 41,000 kilometers, Gagarin returned to Earth, becoming the most famous, respected, and beloved person on the planet for many years to become. Soon after Gagarin's flight, many other space records were made. The first female astronaut, the first multi-seat spaceship, the first spacewalk, the first man to land on the moon. As of September 26, 2019, 563 people have completed orbital spaceflight, 499 men and 64 women. According to the statistics for 2009, the astronauts spent over 10,000 man days outside the Earth, including more than 100 man days of spacewalks. It seems that flying into space is about to become something mundane, completely ordinary, and safe. After all, if so many people regularly fly to the stars and even go out into outer space, then there's nothing to be afraid of. The suit is a reliable protection, so nothing will happen to you, right? No. The spacesuit can be compared to a small individual spaceship. Can an accident happen on a ship? Sure. And that means that the spacesuit can also fail at the worst possible moment. Anything can happen. For example, an astronaut can be flooded right during his spacewalk. Yep, you heard it right, flooded. This happened to the Italian astronaut Luca Parmitano. During his spacewalk in 2013, water suddenly started to flood his helmet. As it turned out later, water was leaking from the cooling system. And since water does not flow down in zero gravity, it has accumulated in the helmet, getting to the astronaut's eyes, ears, and nose. It was impossible to do anything about it, because in outer space, you can't take off your helmet to throw something away. As a result, Parmitano had to return to the ISS as soon as possible. The astronaut couldn't see a thing, so he reached the gateway using memory. He also somehow managed not to damage the suit and soon he was safe. We mentioned that the suit was not damaged for a reason. These special suits, which astronauts wear when they go to outer space, are under pressure, and any puncture can lead to lethal consequences. The vacuum is harmful to humans. Without air, human flesh expands to about twice its size, and this can lead to death. This was experienced by the U.S. Air Force pilot Joseph Kittinger, who made a long jump from the stratosphere in 1960. During the jump, his right glove malfunctioned, and his hand swelled. Fortunately, on the ground it went back to normal, but if this happens in space, you'll be in trouble. Any depressurization may cause air loss.
In this case, in 15 seconds, the astronaut will black out from oxygen starvation. This happened to one NASA pilot, who was in conditions close to a vacuum during tests in Houston in 1966. As he puts it, he felt saliva boiling in his tongue, and after that, he blacked out. Fortunately, these tests were carried out on Earth. In outer space, without the protection of the pressure suit, the fluid in the human body could begin to boil as the gases contained in it start to expand. So if it isn't a lack of oxygen that kills you, you'll be killed by something else, and very quickly. That is why astronaut spacesuits are so durable and tough. Moving in them is extremely difficult, and even the simplest action requires a lot of effort. But this is a necessary measure, because another danger in space is micrometeorites. These tiny particles weigh no more than a gram, but their speed relative to the ISS can reach 36,200 kilometers per hour. No spacesuit can protect you from larger objects. Space debris, which orbit the Earth. These are fragments of old spacecraft, some details that fell into space during the launch and other orbital trash. But unlike the Earth trash, these ones carry a real danger. Collision with any of these fragments means certain death for the astronaut. But one of the most frightening things that everyone probably thought about is the fear of getting lost in space forever. Some astronauts are more scared of this than they are of dying at the re-entry to the dense layers of the atmosphere. And that's quite understandable. The crash of a spaceship means a fairly quick death. But a person who cannot return to Earth, or at least to the station, will be slowly dying until the oxygen runs out. Of course, there are precautions. Everyone who goes into outer space is tied to the ISS with a braided steel cable 26 meters long. In addition, astronauts usually work in teams of two. Before they get out of the lock that separates the station from outer space, they are also tied to each other. The first astronaut leaving the station ties his cable to the ISS hull, and then he does that with his partner's cable. After this, the second astronaut unfastens his cable from the mount in the gateway and joins his partner, with maximum caution. All this is necessary to reduce the risk of flying away from the station, and this method works really well. So far, no astronaut has yet been lost in space. However, two people were dangerously close to this fate. In 1973, astronauts Joe Kerwin and Pete Conrad were outside the Skylab Orbital Workshop and tried to open a jammed solar panel. Everything went according to plan when suddenly, the panel unexpectedly yielded and turned, pushing the astronauts into outer space. Fortunately, the astronauts kept calm and the cables withstood the tension, and this story ended well. But what if the fixtures were not strong enough? Today, spacesuits are equipped with jetpacks, which can fly you back to the station. It's only a theory, though, and the astronaut shouldn't be too far away. In this case, NASA has a special training protocol which is mandatory for everybody. But what if the jetpack runs out of fuel? In space, limb movements will not help change your course or your destiny. No matter how hard you try to float back to the station, this will not change anything. However, if a person is thrown back with enough strength at the right angle, he may get into the Earth's atmosphere and burn in it. Currently, there are no spacecraft capable of picking up an astronaut in such a situation. So all that's left is to fly in orbit and wait until the air supply runs out, approximately in 7.5 hours. And then the astronaut will die from oxygen deprivation. For some time, the body will be decomposing just like on Earth. But over time, water will evaporate due to exposure to sunlight. The lost astronaut will gradually turn into a mummy and will circle in an orbit until he's picked up by some ship. But this will happen if the suit was not damaged after a collision with some space debris. If the suit was damaged, and this can really happen, then all the liquid contained in the body will quickly evaporate. A terrible but quick death. Soon after this, the human body will freeze, not given enough time for the decomposition processes to begin. And yes, it will also turn into a mummy. Well, if for some reason the astronaut ended up in outer space without a spacesuit, then this will most likely be a very fragile mummy. It probably won't fly in orbit long enough to be picked up. However, this all is just a theory. At the moment, there are no corpses in outer space. Yes, some accidents did happen. You probably heard about the crash of the Challenger and Columbia shuttles, as well as the Soviet Soyuz 11 spacecraft. Though the crews did not die in space, but in the atmosphere of the Earth. This is a little different. Most likely, if one of the astronauts died right on board the ISS and not somewhere outside in space, his body would be delivered home, to Earth 
and would be buried with honors. People try not to clog the Earth's orbit, let alone leaving the dead astronauts there. However, in outer space, there is still a little part of the human body, the ashes of Clyde Tombaugh, who discovered Pluto. Now it is carried away by the New Horizons probe to the outskirts of the solar system. This will be the first fragment of a human in interstellar space.